The gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you just gave a long answer, Madam Secretary, to Ms. Sanchez about what you heard that night, what you're doing, but nowhere in there did you mention a video. You didn't mention a video because there was never a video-inspired protest in Benghazi. There was in Cairo, but not in Benghazi. Victoria Newland, your spokesperson at the State Department, hours after the attack said this, Benghazi has been attacked by militants in Cairo. Police have removed demonstrators. Benghazi, you got weapons and explosions. Cairo, you got spray paint and rocks. One hour before the attack in Benghazi, Chris Stevens walks the diplomat to the front gate. The ambassador didn't report a demonstration. He didn't report it because it never happened. An eyewitness in the command center that night on the ground said no protest, no demonstration. Two intelligence reports that day. No protest, no demonstration. The attack starts at 3.42 Eastern Time, ends at approximately 11.40 p.m. that night. At 4.06, an ops alert goes out across the State Department. It says this, mission under attack, armed men, shots fired, explosions heard. No mention of a video, no mention of a protest, no mention of a demonstration. But the best evidence is Greg Hicks, the number two guy in Libya, the guy who worked side by side with Ambassador Stevens. He was asked if there had been a protest, would the ambassador have reported it? Mr. Hicks' response, absolutely. For there to have been a demonstration on Chris Stevens' front door and him not to have reported it is unbelievable, Mr. Hicks said. He said, secondly, if it had been reported, he would have been out the back door within minutes and there was a back gate. Everything points to a terrorist attack. We just heard from Mr. Pompeo about the long history of terrorist incidents, terrorist violence in the country. And yet five days later, Susan Rice goes on five TV shows and she says this, Benghazi was a spontaneous reaction as a consequence of a video. A statement we all know is false, but don't take my word for it. Here's what others have said. Rice was off the reservation off the reservation on five networks, White House worried about the politics. Republicans didn't make those statements. They were made by the people who work for you in the Near Eastern Affairs Bureau, the actual experts on Libya in the State Department. So, if there's no evidence for a video-inspired protest, then where'd the false narrative start? Started with you, Madam Secretary. At 10.08, on the night of the attack, you released this statement. Some have sought to justify the vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material posted on the internet. At 10.08, with no evidence, at 10.08, before the attack is over, at 10.08, when Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty are still on the roof of the annex fighting for their lives, the official statement of the State Department blames a video. Why? During the day on September 11th, as you did mention, Congressman, there was a very large uh, protest against our embassy in Cairo. Protesters breached the walls. They tore down the uh, American flag. Uh, and it was of grave concern to us because the inflammatory video had been shown on Egyptian television, which has a broader uh, reach than just inside Egypt. And if you look at what I said, I referred to the video that night in a very specific way. I said, some have sought to justify the attack because of the video. I used those words deliberately, not to ascribe a motive to every attacker, but as a warning to those across the region uh, that uh, there was no justification for further attacks. And in fact, uh, during the course of that week, uh, we had many attacks that were all about the video. We had people breaching the walls of our embassies in Tunis and Khartoum. We had people, Madam thankfully Secretary. not Americans, dying Secretary at um, protests. But that's what was going on, Congressman. Secretary Clinton, I appreciate most of those attacks were after the attack on the uh, facility in, in Benghazi. You mentioned Cairo. It was interesting what else Ms. Uh, Ms. Newland said that day. She said, uh, if pressed by the press, if there's a connection between Cairo and Benghazi, she said this, there's no connection between the two. So here's what troubles me. 
Your experts knew the truth. Your spokesperson knew the truth. Greg Hicks knew the truth. But what troubles me more is I think you knew the truth. I want to show you a few things here. You're looking at an email you sent to your family. Here's what you said. At 11 o'clock that night, approximately one hour after you told the American people it was a video, you say to your family, two officers were, were killed today in Benghazi by an Al-Qaeda-like group. You tell, you tell the American people one thing, you tell your family an entirely different story. Also, on the night of the attack, you had a call with the president of Libya. Here's what you said to him. Ansar al-Sharia is claiming responsibility. It's interesting, Mr. Katala, one of the guys arrested and charged, actually belonged to that group. And finally, and most significantly, the next day, within 24 hours, you had a conversation with the Egyptian prime minister. You told him this, we know the attack in Libya had nothing to do with the film. It was a planned attack, not a protest. Let me read that one more time. We know, not we think, not it might be, we know the attack in Libya had nothing to do with the film. It was a planned attack, not a protest. State Department experts knew the truth. You knew the truth, but that's not what the American people got. And again, the American people want to know why. Why didn't you tell the American people exactly what you told the Egyptian prime minister? Well, I think if you look at the statement that I made, I clearly said that it was an attack, and I also said that there were some who tried to justify Secretary it Clinton, on, the call basis, on the basis of the video, Congressman. And I but, think but, it's- but, but, but real quick, calling it an attack is like saying the sky's blue. Of course it was an attack. Well, you know, I mean, we want to know the truth. This, the statement you sent out was a statement on Benghazi, and you say vicious behavior as a response to inflammatory material on the internet. If that's not pointing as the motive of being a video, I don't know what is. And that's certainly what, and that's certainly how the American people saw it. Well, well, Congressman, there was a lot of conflicting information that we were trying to make sense of. The situation was very <laughs> fluid. It was fast moving. There was also a claim of responsibility by Ansar al Sharia. And when I talked to the Egyptian prime minister, I said that this was uh, a claim of responsibility by Ansar al-Sharia, by a, uh, a group that was affiliated or at least wanted to be affiliated with al-Qaeda. Sometime after that, the next, next day, early the next morning after that, on the 12th or 13th, they retracted their claim of responsibility. Um, Secretary? And I think if, if you look at what all of us were trying to do, and we were in a position, Congressman, of trying to make sense of a lot of incoming information and Madam, watch the way the intelligence community tried to make sense of it. Madam and Secretary, so all I there can was say not is conflicting, nobody, there was not conflicting information the day of the attack because your press secretary said, if pressed, there's no connection between Cairo and Benghazi. It was clear. You're the ones who muddied it up, not the, not the information. Well, there's no connection. Here's what, here's what I think is going on. Here's what I think is going on. Let me show you one more slide. Again, this is from Victoria Nuland, your press person. She says to Jake Sullivan and Philippe Rhinus, subject line reads this, Romney's statement on Libya. Email says, this is what Ben was talking about. I assume Ben is the now somewhat famous Ben Rhodes author of the Talking Points memo. This email is at 1035, 27 minutes after your 1008 statement. 27 minutes after you've told everyone, it's a video, while Americans are still fighting because the attack's still going on, your top people are talking politics. Seems to me that night you had three options, Secretary. You could tell the truth, like you did with your family, like you did with the Libyan president, like you did with the Egyptian prime minister. Tell them it was a terrorist attack. You could say, you know what, we're not quite sure. Don't, don't really know for sure. I don't, I don't think the evidence is there. I think it's all in the first one, but you could have done that. But you picked a third option. You picked the video narrative. You picked the one with no evidence, and you did it because Libya was supposed to be, as Mr. Roskin pointed out, this great success story for the Obama White House and the Clinton State Department. And a key campaign theme that year was GM's alive, bin Laden's dead, Al Qaeda's on the run. And now you have a terrorist attack, and it's a terrorist attack in Libya, and it's just 56 days before an election. 
You can live with a protest about a video. That won't hurt you. But a terrorist attack will. So you can't be square with the American people. You can tell your family it's a terrorist attack, but not the American people. You can tell the president of Libya it's a terrorist attack, but not the American people. And you can tell the Egyptian prime minister it's a terrorist attack, but you can't tell your own people the truth. Madam Secretary, Americans can live with the fact that good people sometimes give their lives for this country. They don't like it. They mourn for those families. They pray for those families. But they can live with it. But what they can't take, what they can't live with, is when their government's not square with them. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. <clears throat> Madam Secretary, you're welcome to answer the question if you would like to. Thank well. You. I wrote a whole chapter about this in my book, Hard Choices. I'd be glad to send it to you, Congressman, because I think the insinuations uh, that you are making do a grave disservice to the hard work that people in the State Department, the intelligence community, the Defense Department, the White House did during the course of some very confusing and difficult days. There is no doubt in my mind that we did the best we could with the information that we had at the time. And if you'd actually go back and read what I said that night, oh, I, I, was very, I was very careful in saying that some have sought to justify. In fact, the man that has been arrested as one of the ringleaders of what happened in Benghazi, Ahmed Abu Qatala, is reported to have said it was the video that motivated him. None of us can speak to the individual motivations of those terrorists uh, who uh, overran our compound and who attacked our CIA annex. There were probably a number of different motivations. I think the intelligence community, which took the lead on trying to sort this out, as they should have, went through a series of interpretations and analysis. And we were all guided by that. We were not making up the intelligence. We were trying to get it, make sense of it, and then to share it. When I was speaking to the Egyptian prime minister or in the other two um, examples you showed, we had been told by Ansar al-Sharia that they took credit for it. It wasn't until about 24 or more hours later that they retracted taking credit for Secretary it. Clinton? We also knew, Congressman, because my responsibility was for what was happening throughout the region. I needed to be talking about the video because I needed to be putting other governments and other people on notice that we were not going to let them get away with attacking us as they did in Tunis, as they did in Khartoum. And in Tunis, there were thousands of demonstrators who were there only because of the video, breaching the walls of our embassy, burning down the American school. I was calling everybody in the Tunisian government I could get, and finally President Marzouki sent his presidential guard to break it up. There were as example after example. That's what I was trying to do during those very desperate and difficult uh, Clinton, hours. If I could, Mr. Chairman, Secretary Clinton, you said my insinuation. I'm not insinuating anything. I'm, I'm reading what you said. Plain language. We know the attack in Libya had nothing to do with the film. That's as plain as it can get. That's vastly different than vicious behavior justified by internet material. Why didn't you just speak plain to the American people? I did. If you look at my statement, as opposed to what I was saying to the Egyptian prime minister, I did state clearly, and I said it again in more detail the next morning, as did the president. I'm sorry that it doesn't fit your narrative, Congressman. I can only tell you what the facts were. And the facts, as the Democratic uh, members have pointed out in their most recent uh, collection of them, uh, support this process that was going on where the intelligence community was pulling together information. And it's very much harder to do it these days than it used to be because you have to monitor social media, for goodness sakes. That's where the Ansar al-Sharia uh, claim was uh, placed. I think the intelligence community did the best job they could, and we all did our best job to try to figure out what was going on and then to convey uh, that to the American people. Gentleman's time has expired. Chair will now recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Schiff.